Welcome back to the Data Protection Diaries. Welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the recent news that the Information Commissioner's Office here in the UK has announced that they are going to fine Clearview AI 7.5 million pounds for breaches of the UK GDPR and data protection law. Now, this is significant for the UK in particular because it is not often that the UK actually issues fines and enforcement against the GDPR. So we're going to take a look at what's happened, we're going to take a look at why the fine has been issued and more importantly we're going to look at how you can take away some learnings from this for yourselves and obviously for your own organisations as well. Before we get on with the video, a massive thank you to everybody that has subscribed over the last two weeks. We have now surpassed the 1,000 subscriber mark, which is absolutely amazing. I think we're on 1,012 at the point of this video. If you are watching this video and you are not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button down the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Of course, like this video if you enjoy this content and also add your comments and thoughts down in the comments section below. What do you think of what's been going on with Clearview AI? How do you think they got away with it so long? Has the Information Commissioner done the right thing? And how do you think it's going to be enforced? But for now, let's get on with what we want to talk about today. Clearview AI is an American uh, data company, an American artificial intelligence company. What they have been doing is they have been collecting billions and billions and billions of images of individuals, I think somewhere around 20 billion individual images of individuals basically from across the internet. So from publicly available sources, things like social media, any kind of um, online accounts, online uh, systems where you may have uploaded your information or uploaded your picture for identification purposes, they have collated all of those images, all of that information about all of these people and essentially packaged it up and sold it as a solution to a variety of different companies. Now, some of these companies are commercial entities, but some of them are even public bodies. Certainly the UK police force have been known to use Clearview AI. So Clearview AI basically creates a repository of facial images, so it creates a repository of people. Now companies can buy access to this information and access to the application. They can then upload a picture of an individual, potentially if you're in the police for instance, you could upload a picture of a suspect, somebody that you don't know. You can then use Clearview's technology to scan that image and compare it to all of the faces and the images contained within their databases, which can then potentially find links to people that look like the image that you have, give you links to social media accounts, give you links to online public facing accounts where you can try and find out who that person is or potentially even garner a name for that specific individual. This raises huge concerns, not just here in the UK, but across the world about how information is being processed and used, who has access to it and what rights and what controls people have over how that, act, how that information is being used, who it's being sold to, and of course what the outcome of those activities are. It's incredibly scary that information that basically exists within the, the public domain can be so freely manipulated, bought, used, turned into a commercial entity without the individual having any knowledge of the fact that this has happened, without being given any information, and without being told how to stop this kind of activity from happening. Because of the very nature of how we socialize here in the UK, obviously our use of social media and the kind of prolification of that, it has become very clear that there are obviously huge numbers of UK-based individuals whose information is potentially caught up within this database and within this system, and that information has been used by different commercial entities, including the UK police force, for 
for a number and a wide variety of different uh, different circumstances. What's really, really interesting in this case is that the ICO haven't just chosen to find the organisation, they've also chosen to put an enforcement action in against them which stops them from processing the information any further and also requests that that information is deleted from the system. Now this is important because this isn't just about fining somebody and saying you've done something wrong, you shouldn't have done that, here's a monetary penalty. This is about saying you shouldn't have done it in the first place, you didn't have the right permissions, you haven't complied with data protection law, you have to stop using that information and you also have to remove it from your system. Of course the challenge here is that this is now an international issue. This is not a UK based organisation. This is a company based in the US being enforced upon by a UK regulator. So are they going to listen? Are they going to take any notice? And is there going to be any real change? And at the minute that's just something that we don't know. Having said all of that, Let's not take this as being that there is nothing that we can do, there's no changes that we can um, enact because of who they are, because there are some fundamental key learnings that everybody and every organisation here in the UK and certainly around the world can take from this experience. The reasons that the organisation, the reason that Clearview is being fined and is being enforced in such a way are very, very clear. And the ICO has actually broken them down and we can kind of look at those and start to translate them into real world uh, operational challenges so that everybody can actually learn something from it. So the first reason that they've been issued a fine and an enforcement notice is quite simply the information about UK individuals, UK citizens is not being processed fairly or transparently. Nobody has been told that their information is going to be used this way. Nobody has been told how they can have access to that information. There has been absolutely no transparency provided from Clearview. They've made no effort to contact people to let them know that their images are being stored, that their images are being processed, that their behaviors are potentially being profiled, or that their data is being sold to third parties for a range of different purposes. Now, fundamentally, fair processing, being transparent, being clear, is what the GDPR and is what data protection law is all about. So at the first hurdle, they've already failed. So lesson number one is, of course, if you're going to process information, if you're going to collect information from individuals within your organisation, you have to make sure those people know, they have to understand what they're getting into, and they have to understand how they can access that information and what they can do to object and what their rights are. The second breach relates to not even having a lawful basis for collecting this information in the first place. So <laughs> let's go back to basic data protection law. Having a lawful basis, you should not be collecting, processing, doing anything with personal data until you have defined and can justify a lawful basis for that processing activity. Clearview AI have been unable to define that. They can't rely on legitimate interests because the rights, the risk to the rights and freedoms is far outweighed by Clearview AI's own legitimate business interests. They obviously haven't used consent because nobody knows what's going on and none of the other lawful bases such as public tasks are even going to come anywhere near close. So if you are processing information or you even intend to process information, you have to make sure that you have your lawful basis lined up. Make sure that you understand what that's going to be and make sure that you can justify it before you even do anything else. The third breach of UK law came from not being able to identify how they could stop the data from being retained indefinitely. Essentially, there is no retention period associated with this information. When does it stop being valid? When has somebody's um, face, clothing, hairstyle changed? When does it no longer specifically identify an individual? What kind of retention period is associated with that? Information, no matter how you look at it, only has a validity period of a set amount of time. People move house, people change jobs, people get married, people change their names, they move countries. You cannot assume that the information that you hold today is going to be as accurate in two, three, four years time. 
So ensuring that you have an appropriate retention period in place, ensuring that data is cleansed and is moved and is cleaned through on a regular basis is absolutely fundamental if you're gonna be anywhere near complying with data protection law or indeed just records management good practice on the whole. Next on the list is that they didn't do anything and they certainly didn't put any effort into providing higher levels of controls for special category information. So the information that they have collected is com completely subjective. They could have got it from anywhere. We don't know what these people were doing at the time. Were they visiting a church? Were they praying? Were they with a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Is there, were they at a political rally? All of these different things could identify things about individuals that would be classed as special category information. Clearview AI have done nothing to take care of the additional controls required for the collection of that information. Of course, they haven't got a lawful basis. We already know that. So they're not gonna have a lawful basis for special category information. They're not explaining how you can gain access to it. They're not explaining how you can object to it. And they're certainly not looking at balancing the rights and freedoms of the individuals against their own commercial interests. If you are collecting special category information, I cannot stipulate it enough. Please do your due diligence. Please ensure that your lawful basis is accurate. Please ensure that you have run it through. Make sure that you are balancing the rights the risks and freedoms, and make sure you are only collecting the information that you really, really need to be able to deliver whatever process, whatever product, whatever service it is that you may be offering. And the final thing that they did is if it wasn't bad enough that they had images or they have images and pictures of all these different people, is that when members of the public called in to comment or to ask if images about them were being restored, uh, retained or stored, they then asked for more information, information that is not already publicly available to allow them to try and identify where these people are. Now, if you're already calling in because you have a concern that you may have been, uh, your images may have been shared, you are fearful, you're fearful for your right to privacy, you just wanna get your information removed from a system, to then be asked for additional information, to be asked to provide more information to be able to access that information potentially disincentivizes people from wanting to carry on with that request because who knows what other information that is gonna bring up, who knows what information they didn't have and they now potentially have access to. The important thing here is when you collect information, no matter what you are collecting, no matter what your purpose of processing, ensuring that you only collect the minimum amount of information you need to be able to deliver your service is vitally important. You should not be putting people off from uh, retracting from your service, from objecting to processing by asking for information that you do not need to be able to, to assist them in their quest. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is a global issue. It's just fortunate that the ICO and the Australian um, government, the Australian regulator, have come together to carry out this investigation. There are images stored of everybody from across the world. Some 20 billion images are estimated. That is images of me, images of you, potentially images of our families, of our family life, potentially of our children if those things are on social media. The scale of this really is unprecedented. So to actually see something coming out from the ICO is very, very good news. Can they back it up? Who knows? It's very, very difficult when you are looking um, at providing sanctions for companies in international um, places, companies in completely other countries, as we have already seen uh, with things like the Ukraine or the war in Ukraine, it can be very difficult to make people do things that they don't wanna do when you don't have any jurisdiction there. For me, I think for all the stick that the ICO gets, for all of the things that they do, this is not a bad thing. They have demonstrated that they have some teeth. They've demonstrated that they've done a good 
independent review of these activities. They've called out the issues. They've not just issued a fine, they've issued an enforcement notice to stop the processing, which can be much, much more important and can be much more damaging than just pushing a monetary fine on an organization. So I do think that is a good thing, but I don't think this is the last we're gonna hear of it. And I'm hoping that it's not just a case of trying to grab some headlines and you know and trying to demonstrate that that there's that the regulator cares and they can do something but that is yet to be seen please do add your thoughts and comments down below on this particular subject there's going to be a lot of viewpoints and a lot of opinions on this this is just the information that i have garnered today this is monday the 23rd of june this video isn't going to go out until wednesday so we'll probably be a bit behind there is a full press release on the ico's website which i'll put down in the comments below as well of course please do like subscribe all those wonderful things and we look forward to seeing you again next time.